Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. I'm the hardest working man in comics, Victor Dandridge. And I'm Ryan. I own a store. That's, 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 that's the best slogan I've got right now. You know what? That's, that's, a, that's a start. That's a start. You own a store. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. Um, but no, no, I have christened thee. I have dubbed thee the mayor of Comic Town because you are. You are absolutely the mayor of Comic Town. And uh, we're going to get you like a hat. That's going to say it. Wow. We're gonna get you, like, it's going to be a top hat. You're going to basically be oh. the Monopoly man of Comic Town. Except broke. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, so it's a broken monocle. Is that what you want? You want yeah. a, a chip monocle? No, like I'm broke. <laughs> Whatever, man. We know about your offshore accounts. Uh, <clears throat> it's not true, people. It's, it's, it's not, not true. true. <laughs> Sorry, it's not true. Um, all right, so <laughs> in the Apple mentions category, um, we got a lot of stuff. We got, we, we got one, one, it's the, one same. the same, and then... Everything else is different. How many yeah. books did you read from honorable mentions, a, man? A bunch. A bunch. Jeez. Apparently, I'm super jet-lagged after San Diego, so I didn't read crap compared to this guy. Um, okay. So, where do you where do you want to start? I'm going to start with Category Zero. Okay. Like, Issue 1 and Issue 2. Uh, issue 3 is also going to be available here really soon. And, uh, let's see. Adam reached out to me. He's the, right? the, the, the writer in the letter. Let me check this out. And I think you may have reviewed number one when it first shipped. I think so. That's from Scout Comics. Uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, there's a a virus that everybody is infected with, uh, but it's only one one percent of the population it actually does anything to. Oh. And with that, it gives them superpowers of some kind. You know, whatever the people decide to do with them, it's it, you know it's their kind of decision. But there are these. I don't know, camps or, or, or cities or villages where people have the, the one percenters can go and live out their days up until stuff happens in issue one Ooh. where a whole bunch of people die because somebody manifested powers, which then led to a chain reaction where a whole bunch of people died at one of the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, that was heartbreaking because right. yeah. like that was the kid. I and wasn't then, ready. And then the person <clears throat> here realizes what that is oh. and he goes berserk. So... It's really cool. It's kind of like, uh, it's got like the X Men sort of vibe to it in the mm -hmm. sense of, of like, there's these people with powers and nobody really Randomly trusts activating. them. activating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's got this very modern kind of like phobia of, of the government and, and what, what they're doing because they're, they're trying to control them. I and like it. Yeah. I really, this really dug good, it. Man. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Adam. Uh, yeah, reached out. Yeah. So, uh, comic creators of smaller press and independent stuff. Reach out to us. Yeah. We, we'd love to check your stuff out. Absolutely. Adam hooked me up with the PDFs of the first three issues. Amazing. We'll show our Twitter handles. So, so hit us up and, yeah, and, yeah. and let us know. And that's, I think that's important too. Like, don't think that we only want to focus on mainstream titles. No. We want good books. Like, that's literally yeah. what we aim mm -hmm. for. So if the book is good, that's what we want. Hit us up. Um, <clears throat> speaking of good books, mm -hmm. oh, Killer Groove. This was, okay, it was hard to put this down in the honorable mention side. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, okay. <clears throat> The moment, the, uh, hold on, let me get into this. Okay, Aftershock Comics, because I was about to geek out real hard. Um, okay, so we got Ollie Ma Masters um, oh, so and cool. Owen, Ma I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh, Eowyn? 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 Eowyn uh, Marone, or Marin. I don't know how to say this person's name, but I love your work. Let me just say that right now. Um, uh, there's a moment where the two stories that we've kind of been following so far come together. And the way they come together is so perfect. I didn't see it coming mm -hmm. at all. And I like to think of myself as a writer, because I am a writer. Bandage and Announce Productions, check it out. But I didn't see this coming, and yeah. so it hit way harder, because I was just like, oh, yes! Like, I got so excited when that moment happened. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you following this one? That is in my pile to read later. You lucky son of a gun. To be able to read this again for the first time is going to be magic. Oh. So... Oh, yeah. I'm jealous of you. But that moment made this. And this book is a slow, cool burn. It's it's obviously taking place in like the late sixties. Um you got the counterculture happening really heavy. Yeah. But like the pacing of all of the storytelling is so smooth and it's character driven. So it's a lot of it's a lot of events, which is cool, but you're following specific characters and seeing how they fit together yeah. and it's it's really great storytelling. I'm uber impressed with this yeah. one. If you are not <clears throat> on board with this one, again, it's only issue three. Find it, yep. read it, you will dig it. It's fantastic. Yeah, and number one, if I'm not mistaken, was part of a program at Aftershock where stores could order as much as they wanted. Right. And then 
they could return them. So there's going to be copies out there. A lot of stores probably took the risk yeah. and, and it paid off because this is um, it's it's amazing. It's like criminal meets stray bullets. Yes. Uh, oh and, man, good comparison. You're you should own a comic. I, I should own a comic you store. Should totally own a comic store. <laughs> 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 good on you, good on you. Um, okay, so what else do you have I over here? I went a different aftershocky Ooh. direction. Walk through hell. Yeah. Uh, Garth Ennis, uh, Gorn Sadovska. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so dark, man. I don't, there's no way to even catch anybody up. It's, yeah. So, what? the whole revelation of what's been happening is, and Garth has been building us up to, is, is there. It's done. Go out, buy the first trade, track down the, the subsequent six issues, because it's this it, the mystery and the horror of it. It's it initially starts out the story initially starts out with a, a police raid in a warehouse that goes horribly wrong, and then there's two policemen that are trapped in this warehouse. But all sorts of supernatural stuff is happening. They don't quite know what's going on, and you you find out the literal meaning of a walk through hell with this. It's Garth, you nailed it. it it's it's amazing. Uh, if anybody is out there. Is a fan of uh, noir stuff, crime stuff, yeah, uh, and and horror put together. It, it's it's amazing, yeah. Because when the, the final issue, karate chopped me in the face. Oh when, when I was god. like, "Oh god, that's yeah. what's really happening," and the full implications. And and Garth, you're not watching, but if you are, dude, you've you've left this in place where it can be picked up again. I cannot wait to see where you take it with the next volume if you choose to go that way. Please choose to go that way. Mm -hmm. Ryan needs all that kind of joy in his life. I do. He, he loves to walk through hell. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, all right. The little kid in me kicked in. I'm not going to lie. So I picked up Power Rangers from Boom Studios, number 41. Random. Random. I don't think I've been like actively reading anything since Shattered Grid. Um, and I don't even think I actually finished that whole story arc. Um, so it was great to kind of pick this up and just kind of see where things were. Um, they are still celebrating Shattered Grid, though, because it was yeah. dope. Um, but what made me pick this up? Obviously, we're looking at the Black Ranger, Red Ranger, and the Yellow Ranger. And I'm like, hmm, interesting choices. I wonder why they're on here. And they're not in their typical, like, Power Ranger garb. This, ladies and gentlemen, seems to be picking up a thread that suggests that in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, when original Red, Black, and Yellow Rangers, Jason, uh, uh, Zack, and Trini left the show, they were doing some other specific mission type stuff, and we are now getting what happened. Oh, that is so cool. It is probably one of the coolest things I think I've ever read um, outside of Shattered Grid, which sees the Green Ranger still maintaining his badness. Um, this is fan it, it's fascinating because you see them like tapping into another series of, of Power Ranger sets. Because mm -hmm. um, I always kind of felt like. As, as cool as it was when the show first started, it kind of sucked that the original, like those particular originals, didn't get like the fanfare of the movie. Yeah. And, the, and in the movie, like the Power Rangers get like a brand new power set, and it's awesome. These guys kind of missed out on that. Um, no, they didn't, according to this. And there's some <laughs> other stuff that's happening. I am fascinated. They There's some other like persons that are here. Like, check this out, man. Like, this is the basis for what their transitions are. Oh, oh, okay. Now right? that, that even makes more sense. I know. So <clears throat> there's stuff here that is just really wicked cool. If you are a Power Ranger fan, this is definitely something that you need to add to your repertoire. You should have been reading without my even say so. Uh, but good grief. If they make this into a show, if they find a way to do that. Mission accomplished. Know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. I'm 100% there. That's a good one. <clears throat> New from Marvel Comics. Yes. Uh, Jane Foster, Valkyrie number one. This is a book that I think a lot of people are going to sleep on, just with the concept of, like, Jane Foster. She was Thor, right. then she wasn't, now she's a Valkyrie. Don't sleep on it. This book is co-written by Jason Aaron and Al Ewing. Whoa. Right? I didn't grab this book because yeah. why? Right? Well, I mean, why did I not yeah. do that? Kafu is doing the art. It's just, it's amazing. It's Jane Foster, it's not, not just as a Valkyrie. All right, so it starts off, there's a, a damage control, because coming out of, out of War of Realms, the whole planet is littered with other war, worldly technology, weapons, and so damage control is you know, doing their job and cleaning all that stuff up. It gets hit by a robbery, and somebody steals Brunhild's sword. Mm. And no, now Jane, not do that. yeah, now Jane Foster is trying to figure out who has it. 
her, her friend Brunhild's dead. She really can't do anything with it anymore. But in the hands of a bad guy, it's really, really bad news. And so it's her going through, and she's she's in a, in a total Marvel way of like trying to live her normal life while at the same time doing Valkyrie and superhero stuff and trying to find that balance. And there's even, even a quick reference to like, how does Spider-Man do it? And, oh, yeah, keep flipping, keep flipping, keep, oh, keep flipping. Yeah, yeah, keep flipping. What? Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, and flip once more. Kaboom. Oh, my, okay. There you go. Oh, oh, and, nope. No, without no. any spoilers. No, that is the last person, right? The, wow. So I don't know if it was Jason or Al that thought of that. <clears throat> just, just keep the sword, man. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You're not taking that sword back. You're not. You unless you like finders... want it stuck in you somehow. Maybe. Brutally. Finders keepers. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know how to process what I just saw. Right? Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't think um, it was going to be that person. Marvel, Jason, Al, I'd like to formally apologize for not having picked up this book myself for the read pile. Uh, we all make mistakes. I just came in from San Diego Comic-Con. I am jet-lagged. I am honestly admitting that. I am chalking that up. I'm making an absolute excuse for my personal failure in that regard, and I apologize, and I will make it up to you. I will burn something in effigy for this, like, mistake. I am sorry. Like... Unforgivable. Um, okay. Let me just try to maintain and move forward. <clears throat> Holy crap. Yeah. Now, it, it's been advertised. It is the beginning of the Death of Rocket story arc. Yes. You got the bloody paw print. You got Donny Cates. Yes. You got Corey Smith. Yes. Um, Dag Nabbit. Where, where do you even begin in not giving away details about this book? Um, Donny Cates rewriting the cosmic Marvel universe mm -hmm. has been one of the greatest journeys um, a comic fan could ever experience. Yep. The things that he's tapping into, um, old, classic yep. Marvel like institutions, mm -hmm. playing around with those and redefining what they are yep. has been a vainglorious experience. Having said that, I don't want Rocket to go. I'm not ready. Right. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. This Guardians team has got to be the most powerful iteration that has ever existed. It's got Beta Ray Bill. Like, Beta Ray Bill. Yeah. It's got Quasar. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of unfair here. Yeah. Moon right? Dragon, Gamora. Like, it's it's a wrecking crew. Like, like hardcore. Between Beta Ray Bill and, and Gladiator yeah. alone, who stops that team? I... That group, yeah, that, maybe that was. I was not prepared for that I, at all. I had a guess. I was like, "Oh man, I wonder if I know who that person is." No, no, yeah, that did not see coming at all. No, um, and it just kind of, <sighs> yeah. There's just so much. Yeah, that's brutal. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a group of bad people mm. that we haven't seen in a while. In a long while, and the meaning behind it is, I mean, you, you have to know who they are like yeah. you can't this is one of those books where it favors long form cosmic marvel fans yeah and while it might like bring in some new ones mm -hmm. and you have to learn some stuff which is always good like yeah. don't pander to the newbies and just be like oh let's just create new stuff for them but to really expand on what the universe yeah. is and they gotta go back yeah that's not a bad thing it's not not at all mm -hmm. um but whoa yeah whoa mm -hmm. yeah man read it and then we can talk about it it's a tough church yeah what do you think the uh, collection is like? That, like oh that's my gotta, gosh! You know when they do offering music, that's gotta suck. Oh my gosh! Like, yeah, literally. Yeah, because when they fully describe what actually is happening, yeah, like the amount of energy required to get from where they were to oh, where they are, oh, oh, like, dang. Yeah, that's a lot, man. That's a oh. that's more than a Sunday. Like yeah. you're you're there for an all week revival for yeah. real. There's a, there's a tent. There's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> Mm, mm. Um, all right, so <laughs> going into the acrylic, oh, where do you want to start? Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Um, damn. I know, I right? Know. I mean, That's tough. Because we've got the return of yes. something beautiful. Yes, we do. Uh, we, the start of something interesting. Yeah, I, I was like really worried about this one. And then, oh, poor Evie. Mm. She's, she's not mm. in a good place. Mm. Oh. 
dang, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. Um, we we have all three of the same we people. Do. So yes. yeah, uh, let's let's start with this. Okay. All right. Dark Red number five again. Aftershock because we love them. Uh, Tim Seeley, uh, Corin Howell. For, uh, how do I put this? First of all, I love Chip. Mm -hmm. I will forever and always love Chip. Yeah, Chip is awesome. I respect his position. Some of his speech yeah. that he gives is so poignant yeah. and timely right now. Like I feel like it's this is something that so many people are wanting to say, but okay. they haven't figured it out. Yeah, and 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 Tim Seeley speaks these words through Chip. It's amazing. Yeah, um, it's it's violent because of what they're fighting against. Oh my god, uh, vampire supremacists. Yes. yes. Uh, there's these moments of, of beauty where like like Chip and Evie like basically express what they feel about each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's like moments where where Holy Father, Holy Ghost smell the auto zone. <laughs> and, and I'm like I'm cracking up. So it's because just it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Um, I tell you what though, if there was ever a way to uh, deal with some vamps, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly I'm, impressed like, here. If we find out vampires are real, I'm contacting Tim Seeley. Tim Seeley is the brains of my Yo, vampire fighting outfit. I'm because... telling you right now, is can we do this? What do you think we should do? I, I... Look at that, like what, all this stuff he's come up with. He's got brilliance here. I mean, like, like convenience store br brilliance. Yeah. Imagine going to the Quick Stop and finding everything that you need to fight a vampire legion in that Quick Stop. It's there. It is there. You just got to be innovative. You got to be innovative. Yeah. Um, I'm curious as to where this is going to go. It seems Ooh. like Chip, the way this is, this is like Chip has such a strong sense of responsibility. Yeah. It's almost like the, the, the best Spider-Man sort of presentation, Kinda, yeah. you know, he's like, no, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. No matter what I feel, this is where this I'm is my at. job. But he, he gave, her, he gave got, good reasons. It, yeah, he did. He but reasons. like someone's not in a good spot. And no, it, is that person now a, a, ch a bargaining chip or are they a death trap like hard to say yeah it's hard to say which is why i can't wait to see where this goes mm -hmm. um i am curious if this is going to continue with more of a focus on evie than chip based on i wonder that I'm, I'm like are we going to see a story arc with that, that and then maybe awesome. switch back oh, that would be awesome could this oh 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 i'm saying this out loud right now could this be the this generation's preacher maybe I'm just throwing out that he's got the voice. Mm -hmm. He's got rationale and reasoning, yep. dealing with good and evil, yep. um, being a proponent of both, really. But, you know, I think... Mm, yeah, that's I interesting. That I think that might be it. Yeah, that's right, Tim. I said you are... The, you're creating the new preacher, bruh. Live up to that. Don't Better. let us down. Right. Like, put that weight. Lift it. Bench it. Mm -hmm. You got this. Creatine twice a day, <clears throat> 10 milligrams. Wow, that's a good... It's good structure. It's gonna get bulked up. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get huge. Okay. <laughs> I'm seeing Tim at the show like, "Stop, Vic!" And I'm like, "Stop, stop. please! I just, I need you to stop, please!" Don't hug. Oh my god, it hurts. Um, <laughs> I can't breathe. I'm not a vampire. Please stop. <laughs> you smell like garlic. It's nice. Um, so what you know? Uh, which one do you want first? Oh, House of X. I guess. I don't know. Okay. House of X number one. Um, Jonathan Hickman. Um, th this. David LaRoz, right? Is Pepe. David? Is it David? Pepe. Pepe. Oh, I'm sorry. Who was I thinking of? David uh, Marquez. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. This is a weird one. Okay. Because uh, there's there's two six-issue miniseries that are going to lead into the new X-Men uh, launch right. stuff. Uh, and it's going to be House of X one week, Powers of X next week, right. House of X. Yeah. So this is the first one. Right. Um, it's, it's weird because it's almost like I – okay. Trying to figure out how to, how to say it without taking that that surprise away from people. Right, right. Uh, it's a new way of looking at mutants. Yes, but not. But not. Yeah. It, it it actually kind of makes makes sense from their from like Magneto and, and Professor X and Cyclops perspective of. Uh, I'm trying to. It's it's hard to talk about without giving it, it away. It is hard to talk about. I mean, here's my question. Has the lead into this been established in previous issues, or is this truly just an original starting point? This is the jumping on point. That's like, what I thought. Yeah. Um, all right. With that, I have I have criticisms. I mm -hmm. really do. Um, so 
we've seen what happens when Hickman has an overarching plan, mm -hmm. and it can be amazing. Yeah. Um, obviously, him starting off with Fantastic Four, leading into New Avengers, yeah. and getting into the Secret Wars. Um, that was fantastic because it was this nice slow build. Yeah. This seems to be You're a in. lot of information at once. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know if I like it, only because I can't help but compare it to Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely's mm -hmm. new X-Men run, yeah. which I think took its time to establish really what the new status quo was. And it didn't really take its time. Like They said a lot in the first issue, yeah. but it was the way that they mm -hmm. said it that didn't seem like it was inundating us with information. Yeah. Like they were, they were literally resetting everything. Yeah. But it was told in a way that was breathless and easy. Yeah. And this is not so much. Yeah. It's bold. Here's everything. Right. And it's it's almost like Hickman is is so much rewriting the way that we're going to look at mutant kind. Right. That it doesn't matter. Like we're, right. Like it's just this is the way it is. Start reading and and, and go. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Because it's not it's not so much based on the the things that are familiar. Because he's trying to take what's familiar and yeah. spin it on its head. Yeah, well, almost create like a they're more like gods, more like a pantheon. Yeah. Than than just than well, individuals. It, yeah. Um, let's see, who is your favorite new iteration here? There was something about Magneto that I really liked. Really. Where he was like, it, it, there was like a piece about him. True, because there's there's moments in there where I was like, old Maggie would have killed you yeah. at this point. Yeah. Like, he would have been like, yeah, no, you're gone. But he was... But and, this and, time... But he wasn't a pushover either. No. It was no. like he knew where, like what he was, what he's capable of. Right. And like they're, they're almost like ants to him. Yeah, yeah. No, he's... And I think that's the most interesting aspect of Magneto mm -hmm. in this set. Um he he is very cognizant of what he could do yeah and is choosing not to do it and he's very clear like i am choosing not to do this yeah. to you yeah okay like which is horrifying right because you're like well you couldn't he's like no no yes i could i could you know I who could. i am you know what's up you know what i've done yeah okay and i'm not even apologizing for that like i feel like that was a tuesday a good tuesday yeah. Yeah, but him and Chuck are on the same page now. Oh, that's the part that's that's creeping me out. Now, this iteration of Chuck, though, it's more like he's a creator, like like he's like some kind of creator god or father yeah, god. Like he's the maker. He's the he's uh, Reed Richards from the Ultimate Universe. Right. Like and that's what I'm. Okay. So when you when you're because we really haven't seen him in an official capacity where someone's like, hey, Charles. Right. Is it Charles or is it? The creator. I don't know. Is it I both? I don't know. Like, That's, is it somehow the like? There's did it combine so many know. questions. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of questions here. Um, and how did they get on the same page? Like, is it that they've kind of both swayed to a, a common middle ground in their right? Like, how did where where is it? Where's the philosophy at now? I don't know. Because that's the thing. Like, the philosophy has absolutely changed. It's yeah. not about peaceful coexistence yeah. per se. It is like a, a peaceful patience yeah like we we see a new goal yeah and we're just going to wait out this goal and prepare for this goal don't get in our way yeah huge statement yeah huge so um i do think that new x-men had a better opener i am curious faces. as to <laughs> the dude with three faces what's your power Pink I got face, three faces. man come on like the dude was <laughs> awesome yeah i loved him um because, again, like, not to keep touting that, but, like, it set a clear stage of who yeah. everyone was. Yeah. And I was with it. I was with it. And this this is a lot to take in. This it is a really, really whole, is. A whole lot. A whole lot. Um, what I love is is the new centerpiece and such a cool way to use this centerpiece. Yeah. Um, I think that's brilliant. I think that's yeah. probably the most ingenious piece because it's, it's a location mm -hmm. that has a reputation. Yeah. That for whatever reason, no one else has ever deemed to yeah. do this. And I'm like, why not? Wow. Right under our noses yeah. the entire time. The entire time. Kind of brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a smart book. It's not, it is, it's, it's a really, really intelligent book. Yes. It's not just necessarily a bad guy shows up, X Men show up, fight, fight, fight. No. It's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of nuance to it. Um, I'm, did I'm, Hick uh, yeah. Did Hickman write Black Monday? With uh, X Men and the Guardians? No, Black Monday Murders. Oh, oh. 
I thought that was Rick Remender. Maybe that was Hickman. I think because because that was the vibe I was getting. Because there's there's going to be stuff and there's like weird pages that have breakdowns of different things. Take the time to read those because it's it's it if it's anything like his stuff in Black Monday Murders, it is important. Plus, we finally have a definition of what an Omega level mutant is. I was curious about that actually, yeah. um, because it seemed as though they were suggesting that that was a singular individual. Nope, you're right. It's Hickman. Okay. Good, good yeah. call. Good call. It's got that same sort of smart smart vibe to it. That was a book that I checked out on because it was smarter than me. Dang it! Please don't take away my X-Men. <laughs> I'm not prepared to lose them. Okay. Okay? We just got them back in MCU. Don't take them away from me in the books. Please. That's all I want. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need my mutation to kick in so I can understand Hickman's writing. Ugh. Category zero me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sub alpha level mutant. That's what that is. This is so bad. Um, <laughs> but no, I I got the impression that from their conclusion of Omega levels was like there's a, everyone in a category. Yes, but there seems to be people in the same category, mm -hmm. which I was like, that seems kind of different for Omega status. If yeah. you can't be surpassed, then no one else should be in that category with you. Yeah. And is that wrong of me to think that? It's an interesting. Like no, I was okay. wondering the same thing because. You're, you're now, there's now 10 categories right. or, or whatever it is. Okay. All right. When did, well, never mind. That might be a spoiler. Yeah. But there's one person that, that is listed as an Omega level, and mm -hmm. I was like, when did that happen? Yeah, right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> He's back. Thank you, Sean Gordon Murphy. He's back. Um, <sighs> if you didn't read the original miniseries yeah. by Sean Gordon Murphy, uh, Batman White Knight, Shame on you, but you're forgiven. Nope. Hit up your else. No. You're no, not forgiven. You're not. Yeah. Not by me. No. Go <clears throat> to your local comic shop. Pick it up. Uh, it's had two print runs, or maybe three at this point. Hardcover, soft covers. It's also got a black label soft cover for it. It is an alternate universe where Joker goes sane. Yes. And he points out all of the jacked up stuff that's happening. Like, with, with the crime. With How do people keep getting out of Arkham Asylum? Uh, and it's, it, Batman... Like, he gets away with doing all this. There's no, no, act. nah, it's gone. It's brilliant. Well, Jack Napier is back to being Joker. Yeah, Jack is gone. <sighs> Joker's back. Joker is oh. highly upset that Napier has undone all mm -hmm. the work that Joker had set out to do. He spent years doing it. Joker is not having that. He's like, uh, no, one does not undo my joke, okay? No, thank you. Sorry, not sorry. We're going to fix this. Um, and there is a new player. Um, I, mm -hmm. As you can tell from the cover alone, um, if you're not familiar with Azrael, um, did you even 90s, bro? Like, I got to I gotta know. Like, Azrael was... Did you live on a compound <laughs> without access to Batman? You know what I'm saying? Like, did you... Did, I don't even... Like, did you not nightfall? Like, did you... What, what happened to yeah. you? Okay? Um... Azrael was the replacement Batman mm -hmm. after uh, Bane mm -hmm. breaks Bruce Wayne, crack, crack, and uh, John Paul Valley is mm -hmm. who Bruce selects yeah. as his replacement. We got... Which was... Right? <laughs> Good on um, him. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> Bruce was clearly hurting. Yeah. Um, who, like, adopted a brand new take on mm -hmm. Batman, Razor Claws, okay? Yeah. Batman was like, Wolverine, I see you, and I beat you with two more claws in my hands. Yeah. I can't grip things softly because I'm going to cut them. Uh, <laughs> Once I'm in costume, I can't poop. Yeah, that's the 100%. Yeah. I don't even know how he takes them off because ching, right. ching, ching. Like, that's just bad. Oh, right? I'm trapped. Um, <laughs> shout out to Joe Casada for designing that. Yeah. Uh, you see how he did that? Like He designs like the craziest Batman and he goes <laughs> and editor in chief of Marvel Comics. Yeah. I think there was a thing there the yeah. whole time. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Um, but to introduce him in this universe, and it's such a brilliant way. Like that's that's the thing, because like that opening sequence, yeah, it it brings him in or sets the stage for him to be be brought in. But it also gives this really gothic, nightmarish right. background for Gotham and, yes. the, and the whole area. Yes, super rich oh. history building. Yeah, um, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, visually, like it's striking. Mm -hmm. I love how in the behind the scenes stuff you can see, like literally. Sean is like using his thumbprint yeah. in artwork. Like you're getting a piece of him if yeah. you buy some of that stuff. Like that's amazing. Um, that second to last page oh. was 
almost like a religious, like the, the, the characters involved, it yes. was almost like a religious experience 100%. for him. 100%. But when you understand what's happening, it's it whatever the opposite. <laughs> it is the scariest yeah. moment so like, in Gotham's history. Yeah. Because, and I don't even know if like, did, in the original sequence, did Azrael Batman interact? I don't with think. The, I don't think he did either. I don't think he did. So that's when it was like, when, when, when you pepper this kind of crazy and this kind of crazy, and you put them in a bag and you shake the bag, like what? Especially when the stakes are so high for one of them. Who knows when it's yeah. going to go. I think that's the best part of this. Yeah. This is not something we're like, oh, he's just going to you know, go back to the world. Uh, Dark Knight strikes again, blah, blah, blah. No. 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 We have no, no idea where this is going. Yeah. But this is a ride that, like, put your safety hat on and read and enjoy. Because like, it's fantastic. Yeah. This is, oh. yeah. And I love the fact that DC gave Sean this chance. Yes. Like, just do whatever you want. Yes. It's not in the same Batman universe. Go ahead and have and go. Fun. Black Label, it's yours. And he does. And he's like, oh, well then, don't mind if I do. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those things where, like, I almost want to buy him a drink. Of, like, how long has this been in your head? Right. Like, like, it's not something that you're just like, oh, crap, it's deadline, deadline, deadline. No, no, no. No, no, no. Like, no. No, this has been something that has lived with yeah. him for years. Like, possibly as a small child, he's been haunted by this concept of Batman White Knight. He, just, he couldn't figure out how Asbat got out of his costume <laughs> and wrote the story. He's like, no, I'm going to solve this for him. It's a curse, and it's a whole thing. we got to fix it. Oh, my God. It was a dark and stormy night in 1685. <laughs> God, that was brilliant. Yeah. That was so cool. Yeah, because I couldn't figure out. At first, I'm like, oh, wait, those names. Oh, right. yeah, oh exactly. Oh. Exactly. Oh. So wonderful. Which makes me wonder. Yeah. Oh, you guys can't hear this. Okay, that. Yeah. And looks a little ish. Uh huh. And that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And that would I explain why. Exactly. Why he would know about it. Oh. But that would mean, yeah, based on relations, uh -huh. that they are related. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know that made no sense to you, but once you read this book, it paints a clear picture. Tied back into Scott Snyder stuff. It would. And how he would know. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. That wasn't just me. Yeah. No. No. That's that's 100%. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That just made it even better. Yeah. That's like, that, that went from a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich to a triple, triple ducker peanut butter and jelly sandwich mm -hmm. with a tall glass of ice cold milk. Yes. You are satisfied. Mm. You are good. And it's just issue one. Yeah. Just one. This is fantastic. Oh my God. Uh, if this is your first time watching the show, thank you so very much for tuning in. Thank Hope you, you appreciate mm -hmm. all of it. Uh, if you like it, hit like. Yeah, give us that thumbs up. We need that. It validates my existence. You, you don't need validation. You are here. You are 100% here, and you're good at being here. But hit the like anyway, just yeah. so you know for sure. Because, you know, and digital some, likes yeah. are important. You and subscribe. Saying? Yes. Click that bell because we do this every week. Every week. And you sh you deserve to get this goodness. Mm -hmm. We're giving you goodness for free. Yeah. And it's spoiler free. Or spoiler zero. Spoiler we zero. Say, we can't say spoiler free because then we're supposed to be giving you stuff for free, a.k.a. spoilers, which we're not supposed to do. Yeah. We still got to catch, catch, catch 22. Yeah. I still think that we should somehow link up with like a, a junkyard and start Just selling. Give away spoilers. Like, give away spoilers. Like once a month. <laughs> Give away a spoiler. That would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> do you guys have any events coming up this week? Uh, yeah, this Saturday at Comic Con in Columbus, Ohio. What? what? Uh, we've got Matt Ehrman and Lisa Sturley coming in to do an autograph signing. Uh, Matt, she is awesome. By yeah. The way. yeah, yeah, her work is amazing. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get to meet Matt, but like for a hot second. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, yeah, good people. Care Bears is written by Matt. Uh, Lisa most recently did art on the Glow Summer Special, which yes. drops this week. Uh, but then they've they worked together on Long Lost. Right. Uh, she's also done Submerged. Right. So. Good yeah. stuff. Absolutely good stuff. Um, this weekend, if you guys are in Raleigh, North Carolina, you can find me at GalaxyCon, where I will be living it up. Listen, I, I got my list of people that I'm working with this weekend. Envy me, please. Mm -hmm. uh, John Cleese is on the list. They don't even know what they want me to do with him. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, John Cleese. If I'm in the room with John Cleese, hmm. Uh, I'm back with Summer Glau. Oh, nice. Yes, that's fantastic. And for all of you early 2000s babies, Rachel Lee Cook. That's right. That's right. She's all that. Josie and the Pussycats. Get some. Oh, Get some. yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, my life is amazing, and I love myself. Yeah. Yes. 
so yeah, definitely come by, come check me out, all that fun stuff. Um, we'll be we'll be doing a big, yeah. we'll be doing a big GalaxyCon. What what? Out of this world with it. Mm, 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 mm. I just made that up. I probably shouldn't. They're gonna fire me like right now. <laughs> They're like, like that, that dance. That man. dance was. No, no, did you baby. choreograph it with Ryan? <laughs> 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 oh.